Welcome, everyone, to episode 49 of the effing title. Uh, I am exhausted. Today, uh, we have exhausted. The host... Today, we have <laughs> Fedge <Trump>. Jr. <laughs> and some bum that I don't know. <laughs> Fedge, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well until he just ruined our intro, man. He ruined it for us. Wait, you're doing a podcast? Yes, we're doing a podcast. <laughs> Live, right now. <laughs> Sorry about ruining your intro. Professionalism. <laughs> um, the Evan title presents the wild card here. review and the divisional preview this week. I have, I have a good I'm open! I have a good intro. That's a... yep. I'm ready for it. I just want to quickly talk <laughs> about last week. I was Hi. disappointed in two teams, okay? Team one, the Seahawks, okay? Just want to bring that up. Go Seahawks. Team two, the Titans. And if you stick around, I'll tell you why I was disappointed in those two teams. All right, you can go Wait. into your uh, your spiel now. <laughs> can we stop real quick? Why Why didn't we always start with a recap of those picks? Because those, those scores look beautiful. That's what I'm. That's I what I'm. Say so myself. That's what he's doing. I was just giving a recap for dude. <clears throat> yeah, God. If you would shut your mouth, he would do that. I do my intro. I would like to do right, my intro. This is a podcast. <laughs> Scratchy <laughs> this week almost went perfect. He went five and one. He's an idiot and picked against the Ravens. Me and Fedge both went two and four. The only difference was I went plus one, Jeff went minus one in our locks. The fucking Titans. What was my lock again? Your lock was the Seahawks. Interesting. Interesting. They should have won. That was a bad lock. When we look over when we look over the total review of uh picks and everything, um, it doesn't matter because nobody cares that Rob's in the lead. COVID <laughs> in the NFL. I'm COVID sorry. in the NFL. Uh exhausted. I have a question. COVID Why in does no one care that I'm in the lead? COVID in the NFL, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can I just talk about my recap first? I want to talk about my intro, but no one gives a shit about that. (laughs) Uh, I can say honestly, I don't. (laughs) 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 I can't wait for to go back to normal. I'll do a quick thing for the COVID. Um, we just found out that Veldir, Jared, who actually played for... The Colts last week, and little people know, um, we they would know actually, but Ooh. we didn't go over a recap of the games. You know, um, but I they wouldn't know that the Colts got knocked out this week. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, he was playing for the wonderful Packers until he decided to test positive for the Rona. So that's not good for them. And also they have uh, a linebacker for... The Bucks, Minter, I believe is his name. Kevin Minter. Um, tested positive, but so far those, I guess, are the only ones. There's no <sighs> – I think they've done all the contract, <clears throat> contact tracing, and there is no connections with anyone else. So we should be good about that. And then also I want to throw out real quick here before we get into everything else that uh, they don't think he's going to play this week, but um, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is way ahead of schedule on his recovery back from his hip and ankle injuries. So that is a good thing for him. So uh Stefanski is looking good for this week. Yes, all all of the all of the Browns players were just uh were just good to clear good to go and don't have anything to worry about there. Guys, so. guys, guys. I thought I So we have nothing this. to worry about. The head the coach for the Browns does it effing matter. That coach matters for every team. All mm-hmm. coaches matter. Every game matters, Rob. The games, yes. The games do matter. I agree. All coaches so, matter. Let's look at last week. Review of last week. What do you guys what do you guys think? Well, like I said, I was very disappointed in the Seahawks. Uh, I feel like their team's actually broken. Um, they looked absolutely atroci- atrocious. Um, they couldn't convert a third down. Saved their lives. And then when they couldn't convert a third down, I don't, I don't know, I think they had like three conversions. But anyway, they couldn't convert a third down. And then when they decided that they could convert a third, or uh, that they decided that the best way to convert a third down is just by hucking it deep to DK every time. And that's, that's not going to work. I'm just, just saying that's, that's not a not a uh, way to succeed. Um, I was really upset with the Saints defense for not 
uh, allowing the Bears to break their record for at least first downs in a game. Um, they gave up six all game until the final drive where they gave up, uh, I believe it was five on the final drive alone um, to to not break the record. Uh, but like I said, then I was also disappointed with the Titans um, and surprised with the Ravens. Uh, once you can shut down Derrick Henry, as we multiple or I've said multiple times, uh, things go well. And they shut him down. I mean, I don't think they gave him enough carries personally, but I think they held him to under 50 yards. I mean, kudos to them. And, uh, yeah, those are my takeaways. Steelers suck. I mean, we weren't really expecting that any different because they're overrated. But, yeah, that's what we got. <laughs> Spreasy? I honestly, I mean, I, my I have two takeaways, and they both are very similar. One, the Steelers and the Seahawks both. I think it's time for them to hit a reset. Both both of those programs are now very good regular season teams, and they are terrible postseason teams. I mean, terrible. The Seahawks are kind of the second half of the season teams, not even postseason. And I think the Steelers, I mean, they it's time to move on. Like, they need to seriously move on and never look back. Um, and they need to really reboot the entire thing because that team – yeah, that team has no heart or anything. But on a positive, Chase Claypool did just sign with uh, Jump Twenty Three, Jumpman Twenty Three. Um, oh, really? That's awesome. If you don't know, for people out there, he uh, he's a Jordan man now, so that's cool. Good for him. Um, that's that's all, all I got. <laughs> you know who else is a Jordan man? The entire Browns team that just whooped their ass, and then Chase Claypool still had the nerve to talk shit. I lost all respect for Chase Claypool and for Juju Smith Schuster as athletes. <laughs> Have respect for Chase Claypool. What has he done to earn your respect? Just curious. Chase Claypool? Yep. Nothing. I mean, he had a pretty good rookie season. I mean, outside of a couple games, I mean, it wasn't anything spectacular. I mean, well, like me, me, and, me and Rob no. talked about it earlier where um, I forgot who it was. I think it might have been Ike Taylor. He was talking about how he doesn't understand this, like, the new generation where it's like you get your ass kicked and you're still going to run your mouth. You know, that's a fact. That's like just, a fact. just shut your fucking mouth and just you know, get back to work. Instead of being you know on your like Instagram live, like yeah you know you know we may have lost the Browns but oh, they're gonna get clapped, bro. You just got clapped. Yeah, exactly. Like, who like, cares if they're gonna get clapped by someone else? It's not you moving on. Like freaking. <laughs> so since when wasn't winning enough? Like, come on. Yeah. So give me a win. You know. I don't what, know. What, I do you just, got? what do you got takeaways? And then I hate the, I, like I said with the Seahawks, I, I just don't know what's up with that team. That team cannot perform. Like I said, they're broken, dude. They, it's, I don't know the, yeah, there's, it's, I don't know how to, I don't know how to fix it because it's one of those things where like you look at that team and there shouldn't, there shouldn't be a need, like, you wouldn't think that the problem would be that they like either choke the, the games or they don't play down to their, you know, like that sort of thing. It's just, it doesn't make sense. There's something, there's something fundamentally wrong with Seattle. It's no, it's Pete Carroll. I think it's but, combination well, no, no, no. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. Fetch, wait. Rob, you just said earlier the coach doesn't matter. So Coaches I, don't I, matter. I, 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 I now say hockey. Sir. Actually, I think he said Browns coaches don't matter. Is his original <laughs> statement. And then he doubled down and said coaches don't matter. So I'm going to give it a double. You no, suck, no, no, Rob. I, you just guys, lost three points. I said the Browns head coach does not matter. You then responded, Jeff, by saying all coaches matter. As um, they do, and you said no, they don't. But yeah, no. Um, so yeah, I'm that, still referring to the Browns. I didn't change my stance. <laughs> as soon as, as soon as the, as soon as Pouncey snapped the ball over Ben's head, I knew that game was over. <laughs> like I mean, like oh, just <laughs> loved it. It was like it was an absolute shit show. I was, about, I was speechless for the for the whole fucking first quarter. Like I like. Are you guys believers in the Buccaneers? What? Before we go on to that, Colin, hmm. what were your takeaways? That, um, that's what I'm going over, Rob. Yeah. Um, Finish. I think that the... Because I don't think the Bucks look like a great team. You know, they went they went toe-to-toe with the Washington football team with their third-string quarterback, who was an XFL backup to Jordan Tomu from the Seattle uh, Battlehawks. 
uh, St. Louis Battlehawks. Um, and Tyler Heineke. I think that the Ravens, you know, the Ravens finally got their revenge on Tennessee. So fuck them. And I think the Bills, the Bills did what the Bills do. They they play good football, but they're they take uh, the way that I saw saw it. And I don't know if I'm right with this, Jeff, or not. So you might have to correct me on this. The defense takes ch- a lot of chances. Like the, their their individual defensive players take a lot of chances. As far as what? So like Tremaine Edmonds, like like go like going to the hole, like, because you may have talked about this before, like, him going to the hole and, like, going to, like, hit big hits on someone, and the dude, like, just jukes him out of his shoes. You just little things like yeah. that. I would say that's, you know, I mean... I mean, it, it is an A. I mean, it's just, that's just his game. I mean, exactly. Just, but, like, I, 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 I feel like that there's a lot of individual... Like, it, like, they do great as a team, don't get me wrong. But, like, you can tell on certain plays when, like, something goes wrong, you can kind of see a little bit of it if you're looking. Um, but then, yeah, and then the Rams just, you know, fucking, you know, like like we've said, I don't know how many fucking times on this podcast now, the Rams offense is, it's fucking really good. So, that's my take, boys. My, my problem with the Rams, honestly, is, uh, I, I don't, I don't think they would have won that game if Jared Goff didn't come in. I think they made a mistake by not playing him. Um, and it was back for them that, you know, See, I thought that, that he got hurt, but I don't, I don't think they would have that game. So, in the game. so, because of course I didn't watch, I didn't watch that game. So Walford started, <laughs> Walford got hurt, and then the starter came in. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Makes sense of that, right? Yeah. They just didn't think his uh, his thumb was ready, um, and you could see how they protected him. Um, I mean, even even I don't think he was. I mean, there was one point I think he was like two for eight with fifty eight yards, and one it was it was a forty five yard pass that got you know down there. It was just he wasn't looking good. He did not feel comfortable. Um, I, I, <laughs> like I said, I, I don't know, but I, I think he you know they. It's more because he wasn't, you know, ready to start. It's, you know, I don't care if you're a starter or not. You're coming off the bench. You're going to have those lapses. If you... <laughs> also, you I will say, last but... thing I'll say is, I think, I think that the, the ta- uh, Tampa kind of got, I don't want to say hosed. That's not hosed. That's not the right word. They got hosed. kind of, um, the old, the old, the old, I'm going to hold this hand up here. Once you look it up, I'm going to punch you in the throat with my other hand. One of those things. With the Alex Smith, Tyler Heineke thing. Because there's two completely different fucking quarterbacks. You know, the offense, like we, we saw last week, the offense looks completely, would have looked completely different this past weekend with Smith than with Heineke. Oh, for so sure. So I feel yes. like that was a huge part of it too, but... Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's that, those are my takeaways. Though. So they interviewed Andrew Whitworth this week, and they actually the tackle for the Rams, mm-hmm. and he actually said that their game plan was so di- like it changed drastically once Goff came back in. So like he even said it, it, the entire offense was sitting there going like, uh, "This isn't what we've been practicing. This isn't our game plan." And you could tell, you could tell when you watch it, like they looked out of sync when Goff came in. Mm-hmm. So I think that that had a lot to do with them being slow in that area too. Right. So no, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, you're. And that's the thing is, it surprised me how much teams don't like their backup quarterbacks aren't always necessarily mm-hmm. made the same way. You know, it just and that surprises me. I just don't know why they, why they don't do that, you know. Uh, one of the things I did want to just quickly mention—I don't know if anyone, if the, if the people, the peoples out there, uh, know it or not—the um, AFC, all of the quarterbacks are under the age of twenty-six. Yeah, cool, isn't it? It's kind it's of fucking the, terrifying. The AFC is in, uh, in good, in good shape going forward. Uh, the NFC. Has some catching up to do. That's why they're going to be trading for Deshaun Watson in the offseason. But that's their topic for another day. 
they got to catch up. Because that's the thing is, yeah, the, the uh, three in there are under 26. But look at the other ones. Look at a guy named Herbert. Look at a guy named Deshaun Watson. Look at Burroughs. Look, like it's, look at Darnold. Like it's, like, there's a lot of good young QBs in the AFC. I don't know oh, if never you mind. could Let's take you know, out, go that way with Darnold. It. I mean, you could take out Darnold. That's fine. I mean, you could even say Tua, potential-wise. I mean, yeah, throw put Tua in there. Throw, throw for that's... Throw, uh, let's throw Fitz in there. Patrick said he said Tua. Yeah, let's throw Fitz in there. He's young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he's younger than all of them at heart. Dude. That's a, you um, know, but... Yeah. But, all right, so, Jeff, you had a thing that you wanted to do, so I'll let you run this. No, I just uh, – so we're going to go through, and we're going to give um, – Kind of our ranking, uh, where we think team. I, I should say our ranking. So it's gonna be our ranking at the key skill players on just offense. Uh, we're gonna do this week. So of the playoff teams left, we're gonna go with quarterback, uh, running back, and receiver. And just I mean, we could just give our top five, I guess. What you think? And it's only from the teams that are left. So you want us to give a top five when there's six teams? Let's just go. Let's go top three. Let's there's go top eight teams. Three. There's eight teams. Let's go top three. Oh, sorry. I've got your incorrect math before the podcast. <laughs> <in> the <head. laughs> so, so, we'll go with that, guys. Let's, let's see what they got, you know? I was going to rank them all, but I feel like that would take <clears throat> a little bit too long. Yeah. But, all right. Well, um, so see, cool. I want to go top five. So, right? so, QBs then. QB. QBs. Who are your top five QBs that are left? Right now at this moment, correct? Yeah. I mean, what do you, where else would you do? What? 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 All time. <laughs> All time, yeah. No, no, no. Right now at this moment, who's the top five Johnny Unitas. In the playoffs. Well, the best one right now. Five is... to worst. Go to five up. Five up? I was going to say. Yeah. Th- 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 Give me your number five, and then we'll go across the board. Right now, my number five is Baker Mayfield. Okay. I have Drew Brees at five. See, that's the one I beat out. Okay. Got one? I'm going to go. I don't know if I got really do blue. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Lamar. Lamar at five. Okay. So you said quarterbacks. Yep. <laughs> uh, did you see the pa- the first pass he made against the Titans? That's fine. We're not, we're not here to criticize. I'm just curious. Okay. Four, Rob. Who you got? You didn't tell us who you had at five, did you? I did. I said yeah. Drew Brees. Brees. said Brees. That's right. Um, four. Probably Brady right now. Whoa. I don't know how you go Brady, but okay. Okay. We'll go. Uh, I'm going Lamar. Baker. Baker at four, okay. Three, I got Mahomes. Three, I have Aaron Rodgers. Mahomes. Two, I've got Josh Allen. Two, I have. Am I going to go? I'll go Josh Allen at two. Rogers. And I have Patrick Mahomes at number one. I've got Rogers at one. Allen. Allen at one, huh? Okay, okay. Okay. We got for running backs. So this is this is what I was about to ask. Are we gonna do running backs or are we gonna do running like core? Not backfields. No, 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 no. Running back individually. Running back. That, that. Hold on, I gotta like try and remember who the hell some of these running backs are. For the, for these ones, we should do like three because it's gonna get a little tough doing. Three overall. Yeah, like so. Three. Well, no. My bet. My first one is Cam Akers. Is that, is that, three. Is that the dude for the Saints? Not no, the Saints. The uh, the Rams. Yeah, that's the dude for the Rams. Yeah, I want the dude do- for the Rams. The dude from the Rams. That's my <clears> first one. 
That's number three? Oh, no, sorry. Um, number three. Please hold. <laughs> Is Green Bay Aaron? What's Aaron Green Jones? Bay? Aaron Jones. I got Aaron Jones at three. Okay. Okay. I have Nick Chubb at number three. I got Jones. I've got Nick Chubb at number two. I have Aaron Jones at number two. Who at two? Number two? Yes, number two. No, who'd you say? Huh? Is it Aaron, Aaron Jones? Jones? You said Aaron Jones? Okay. Yes. Uh, number one, Cam Akers. Number one, Alvin Kamara. Number one, Alvin Kamara. And, and, and two, and right two right is Chubb. Not right, right now. What do you mean, not right now? We're going based Why on... Right. Just, I'm curious on that. Why not right now? Because Alvin Kamara is best when Drew Brees can get him the damn ball. And right now, Drew Brees can't get a wet towel at the fucking ball. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Interesting, Robert. I just, I, I disagree with that. I don't know if you watched the game last week. <laughs> no, I didn't watch. The game was so shitty that they said, oh, let's put it on Nickelodeon. <laughs> One of the channels it was on, dude. Jeez. Awesome. Like, that's how bad they were like, hey, this is going to be so bad. Let's put it on Nickelodeon. This is going to be so bad. Let's put it on Nickelodeon. We got to put one of them on there. Might as well be the crappiest game of them all. What did he say? <clears throat> Might as well put one of them on there. So let's put the crappiest one of them all. All right, wide receivers. No, real quick. I just want, I, just, I don't know what he's talking about. So, so real quick, I just want to go over that. Drew Brees was we'll playing over, bad we'll down the stretch. Yeah, we'll oh, so yeah, because I was going to say, we, didn't, just say we didn't go over Drew's quarterbacks. Like, bad down the stretch, but I mean, Kamara still almost ran for 100 yards, though. Dude. I, mean, I don't know how you could say he's not good. And I mean, he's only going to get better because he had that. Go ahead. Go. Don't pull words in my mouth. Top three wide receivers. Top three wide? Oh, God. Just name them off, go. Three to one. Just go all of them. Can we go with mine? I mean, I'm going to uh, – I'll go with mine because I already know I already know mine. This is wide receiver and tight end, by the way. Pass catchers. Oh, okay. then I got to readjust um, it then. So I'm going – So I was going to three? Do... Yeah, because I was going to do tight yeah. end as a, as a separate Kyrie thing. Hill, Devontae Adams, and uh, Stephon Diggs. Diggs number one, or did you just – Diggs number one. Do? That was three to one. I have – okay, three to one. I have Diggs, Kelsey, Adams. Adams is the number one receiver in the NFL. I don't like that. I was going to do – I was going to do tight end separately, but um, for, two, but... for wide receivers, I was going to go Landry – Diggs, Adams, Landry, huh? I, uh, Land I, think, I when, think Landry's when, so limited. Well, my thing is, uh, like, and you, I think you see it shine more when, right now, when uh, Odell Beckham isn't there, Landry gets the ball and Land, like Landry hosts that offense because it's only option. <laughs> well, of course it is, but still, though, I mean, it's you know, I, I still think that Landry is a really good receiver, just stuck in fucking Cleveland. See, I would put, I would put Cooper Cup ahead of Landry. I put Robert Woods or Cooper Cup ahead of Landry. They're the same kind of same receivers in the same type of offense, depending on. Uh... Y'all, I mean, you guys both know how much I love Cooper Cup, but um, yeah. I've always, I've always liked Landry. I've liked Landry since college. Yeah, he's just a dirty player. But all right, let's get into this. <laughs> yeah, Jeff will never like him because yeah. what he did against the Bills. Twice, twice, not even once, twice. All right, well, let's get into let's it. Matchups of the week. I don't know which ones they're playing when because I didn't actually write it down in that order. I wonder if I got it right though. Let's take a look. Here. Uh, Packers. Packers games first. Packers game. Are Green Bay? Uh, the LA Rams at Green Bay. I'm going Green Bay. Rob, who you got this game? Dude? 
I I want to pick the Rams with everything in my power, but I just I can't with the way Goff played. So I just Bro, so I'm still gonna pick him. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he fucking said that like four times last week. I really want to. But <sighs> no, I'm gonna go with the Pack. I think the Packers are a more complete team, even though Aaron Donald is supposed to be healthy. So that'll be uh big, obviously. Um but no, I'm gonna go with the Packers. At home, in front of that amazing crowd, you know. Yeah, I don't think they have any fans. No, I don't either. Just in general, they have no fans. Does <laughs> anyone actually like the Packers? <laughs> I'm going the Pack as well. No. I just, I think. I would the... pick the Rams to cover, though. Yeah. What's the, do you know what the over under is? La- when or, uh, it was earlier right, I mean. in the week when I was listening to the gambling show, but it was uh, nine earlier in the it's, week. It's a seven and a half, and I'd still take it. Yeah. I just I think, I, it too. I think that the Packers offense is too multifaceted, which is funny to say when you think about it, but it's too multifaceted for you know, Aaron Donald to fully be able to just completely shut down. And I'm I'm gonna say that you'll kinda kinda the Rams have a really good defense and a really good cornerback in uh, Jalen Ramsey. I mean, really good. Like, yeah, there was, I was reading Adams? stats. What's up, Brad? Do you think Ramsey can shut down Adams, though? And that's my question. I mean, he's been – so, they were – they were. Uh, I saw a stat that he was pretty much shutting down whoever you want to, you know, say. I don't really care. Anyone anyway, when went this year, he shut him down. But the thing is, the Rams are such a zone-heavy defense. Like, does it really – can you really say he actually shut him down? Own. Um, just as far as I mean, he doesn't line up with them that. You know, that yeah, it's it's, it's, it's it's not like a, it's not like it's it's a skewed stat. Yeah. It, it is. It's just it's not the old days where you know Drew Reeves would just sit there lock him down. It's not even last year where Stefan Gilmore would sit there lock him down. No, it's it's not the same thing. It's different defense altogether. And I mean, they use his length properly, whatever. I mean, but um. I don't know. I, I I think he's a good it's gonna be a good matchup, I can tell you that. You know, it's it's gonna be a great matchup, but the thing is I think Rob mentioned earlier Aaron Donald should be healthy, but I think it's still gonna be rough because I th- I think he's gonna be he's gonna be healthy enough to play. I don't think he's gonna be healthy enough. Also I mean what I mean uh, what it's a rib, right? Green Bay's gonna run it right at him. Oh yeah, I mean, well. it's, I mean it's it's his rib, got. right? I mean, yeah, it's his rib. Yeah, I mean, all, all three yep. of us, all three of us know if, it, like, if that first punch that the, one of those linemen are gonna throw, you know for a fact they're gonna fucking put their palm right into that, right into his fucking ribs. And it, after maybe play ten of doing that, you know, Donald's probably not gonna fire off as hard as he normally does. Mm-hmm. If the rib is, if it's as bad as like what some people have said, sort of thing, you know. Um. Going to the night game, we got uh, Ravens Bills. So Ravens. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, like it, I'm also locking up the Packers. By the way, I just uh, Ooh, okay. I feel confident in that. But um, I'm on the Bills, but yeah, I'm, I am also going the Bills. Um, I'll give the, the unbiased. Uh, I know you can both do it, but I'll give the unbiased opinion. Um, Baltimore relies heavily on playing a lot of man-to-man and bringing a lot of pressure, and I don't think their corners can hold up against the Bills' receiving core. Um, Obviously, a big question mark is going to be the health of uh, Cole Beasley, and if he's healthy, then that's going to be a big, big advantage for them. But... um, I could, I can see a close game, but I think the the Ravens will need to have a way different plan than they did against the Titans. Otherwise, if they go with that same plan, they're going to give up 50 points. Now, I'm going solely off of last year. The Bills did a real. I was watching NFL Live this afternoon, and they broke down what the Bills did against the Ravens last year, and they did a really good job of taking away those like read runs and all that stuff. I mean, obviously, it's a different team this year, but um, I think they're going to make Lamar have to be a QB 
and I'll be interested to see it. Plus, they said it's supposed to snow uh, in Buffalo, Ooh. and on that day, and Lamar's never played in the snow, apparently, awesome. is what he said. He said he has zero experience in the snow. I just want to say something real quick on that. Uh, it's thirty percent chance of flurries. Um, it's not going to snow. It's that's what if, they if said on NFL Live. I'm, yeah, and I'm just telling you what Buffalo weather yeah, is. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, Jeff, snow. Jeff, it's, it's it's NFL Live. Like it's, they get a flurry, it, and it's it, like, oh it my god, snow, shut it down. It's not going to be anything like uh, you know these big uh, snow games, you yeah. see anything like that. It's going to be it's going to be cold. It's you know, there's going to be flurries. Like it's it's not going to be anything crazy though. So it's, you mean it's not going to um, be like the monsoon that Lamar played the Patriots in? God, that was, that was the most fucking ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, no, not anything like that. <laughs> so, um, I think he kind of hit, hit some good points, though. Um, I, I think that definitely it, they're, they're all concerns. Um, as a Bills fan, I mean, you just obviously I – mean, as, as really any team going against it, you got to be concerned with Lamar in general. I mean, he's, a, he's an athlete, um, and you got to be able to stop by athletes, let's be honest. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. So, so we, we've talked about this. I mean, Kyle, and I, I've been talking about this for about six, seven weeks. Um, the Ravens are hitting their stride at the right time. Um, and before last week, I would have said the Bills doing the same thing. Um, both of them are on heavy win streaks. Um, obviously I thought the, um, Ravens took care of, it's easier than the Bills took care of the Colts, uh, but if you break actually stats down and everything, the, the Bills played probably one of their worst games of the year and found a way to beat a really good team. And I'm going to double down back what I said way back in the beginning of the year. I think they were the best defense. Um, I, I, I think the Colts are one of the best, and I'm going to say they are the best defense in the NFL. Um, I do believe that. And uh, who? The Colts. Oh. Um, but like I said, it, it comes down to it, it's it's going to come down to third down conversions. The Bills had I, I want to say it was two third down conversions. Um, all all game, and it, it was depressing as a Bills fan. But it's. It's it's nice because, like I said, you good teams. They you know, always say good teams find ways to win, and I think that's what the Bills did. But like I said, I mean, it's it's a streaky league, and you're going into a tough game against Baltimore. It's going to depend on if you can limit big plays. Um, that's a big knock last week with the Titans and Baltimore is they said that none of those teams were built to come from behind. Um, I don't know if you heard the stat column, but that was the first time Baltimore's come yep. back 10 down in, I think it was like two, three years. Yeah, since, uh, since, it was, Lamar, only, yeah it's, it's since Lamar took over as a yeah, starter. They were the only team in the NFL not to come back mm-hmm. down from that deficit over that team, over that time. And it was a big place. Uh, Lamar, you know, was able to use his feet and get out of pocket. Um, the Bills have been notoriously good at shutting down what they want to shut down. And it comes back down to what Rob's saying. If the Bills want to shut down Lamar and that's what their focus is, and they want to try to beat him, I'm uh, sorry, shut down Lamar as a runner, um, that's what their focus is. It's going to depend on J.K., um, Gus, and, you know, Lamar's arm. Um, that's... If they feel comfortable doing that, then yeah, go for it, I guess. Um, but I think it's a good game. It's it's playoff football. It's yeah. it's good. Uh, it's going to be a cold game. I can tell you that. And it's just it's a little different. Um, it's going to be how well can you hold up against a run team in uh, cold weather, and that's what you're going to have to do. So. It's also it's not just making Lamar a passer. It's keeping Lamar in the pocket as a passer. So going to be the challenge. Yeah. As well. So the interesting thing though is so of course. With me being, you know, a Ravens fan, Lamar's better in the pocket than he is on the run. So when people say, oh, we want to keep him in the pocket, it's kind of not true. You don't want to keep him in the pocket for the throw. <clears throat> well, no, you want to keep him in the pocket so that he doesn't break exactly. a 50 yard run. Exactly. But so it's kind of one of those things where he's actually, like, his numbers are better when he's just in the pocket throwing. Than when he's like on the run or like moving around throwing, it's a weird, it's a weird stat that like I didn't even realize until like halfway through the season when they mentioned it, and I was like, hmm. 
Um, no, I think I think this is going to be the game of the week, not just because it's my team and Jeff's team. Um, I really do think this is going to be the game of the week. It's you know, it's kind of feeling like old, you know, kind of old school AFC, you know, playoff football now. You know, you got you know, run heavy team. You know, good defense, good defense, pass team. You know, like we've been seeing this for fucking years, and it's like you know, it's just two different faces now. Um, mm-hmm. I think the the big thing is going to be like I agree with Rob. If Baltimore goes in with the same attack that they had against the Titans, they're gonna get fucking destroyed. Knowing or not knowing that's the wrong word because of course I don't know him, but seeing what <laughs> Wink does, seeing what Wink does. Um, he's going to bring pressure. That's what we do. We fucking come after you. I think this is going to be done in different ways because I think that, it, and like last week, where last week it was, we're shutting down, you know, Henry, and we don't give a fuck about the passing stuff. We're going to shut down Henry. This week, I think it's going to be the opposite, and it's going to be, we'll let you run, but we're not going to let you throw. So I think it will be interesting to see what they do. You're not going to let him throw? That's the thing. Or are you just going to limit big plays? I I think it's going to be a little bit of both. Like, we're going to try to make it so you just can't throw. Which, of course, then just comes down to eventually, because, of course, you're never going to be able to do that. So then it's like, okay, let's just eliminate the big plays, you know? Um, so I think we're going to let you... Are you saying he's going to drop, like, eight in coverage, that type of thing? No, we're going to... No, I mean, he, uh, Wink doesn't do that. Wink's going to come after him. I'm just saying that it's going to be more based off of trying to, like Jeff said, stop the bigger plays than anything. Um, Fair enough. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I don't want to compare them because they're, I, I think Kansas City is a way better offense, but mm-hmm. that's, I feel like, what people try to do to Kansas City. We still have, a, you know, like that burner, like, uh, you know, Tyreek Hill. Oh, yeah. Um, or that, you know, safety valve is, you know, Travis Kelsey, but we have a different style mm-hmm. of quick strike, high power exactly. offense. Um, that I think you have to, I mean, you have to limit it. I mean, it's just, you, know. you guys use tempo very well as, as well. You guys, the Bills go from no huddle to huddle to mm-hmm. count. they use it very well. That's why they can score so quick a lot of times because it might be a seven play drive, but it happened in two and a half minutes. Yeah. So I th- so I just I think it'll be interesting to see how, because um, of course it does. You know, it is like yeah, there's a lot of weapons there. You know. Um, and as I said, as I said earlier in the week, uh, like, do I think that we could run man against them the entire game? I honestly don't think, Rob, like you think that we would just get destroyed and burned the entire game. I think that we would get burned every now and then, but it wouldn't be all the game. Um, I think you severely underestimate how good Stefan Diggs is. I think you, you severely play, underestimate your, how good Marlon Humphrey is. Play man on him. It's going to be a long day. Um. I yeah. might also underestimate the corner, your corners, but. But um, no, I just I think it's gonna just, be. Uh, I just had a fan write into me, um, at at Jay Brown and said, "Go Bills." Uh, he just wanted to put that out there. Just yeah, I, I that out there. Okay. okay. Um, uh, <laughs> well, no, no, I just I think that uh, you know Baltimore's gonna do the, the normal thing. We're just gonna try and run the ball and then do some of the pass stuff off it. It was interesting seeing some of the new pass stuff. Or not new, but some of the different wrinkles that we haven't shown fully yet this past week, and how they kind of worked, and it was kind of cool seeing it. So, um, moving on, Sunday football. We got Browns at Chiefs. I want to hear Rob pick Browns first before I say anything. Well, Browns Good. Chiefs. I, you think I'm crazy? I. I... I, 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 my brain says the Chiefs are going to win by 40. Okay. But, but how much 40? Yeah. They're, I, my brain says they're going to blow them out. I don't see a close, like, if, if it's a close game, I think the Browns win. I, I don't think the Chiefs, if the Chiefs come out sluggish, I think there, there's only, Cleveland's got to throw the kitchen sink at them and go on these long, long drives. If they try to score with the Chiefs and try to go with all these deep passes and trick plays, they're going to get blown out. But if they just eat clock and run the damn ball, I think they, they'll have a pretty good chance. And uh, I'm actually – I am going to pick them. I'm going to pick the Browns just because everyone's against them. 
except for that city. And uh, I don't know. I think they're the Cinderella team this year. Okay. They're going to be that team that go. They're the Titans from last year. They're going to go on a deep run, and then they'll play a team that just is like, okay, this is enough. I'm going Chiefs. Nice, nice little, you know, sentimental uh, story going on there. Yeah, but Colin's like, I'm just going to the Chiefs. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> um, my, my first comment is, like Rab said, it's it's going to be a tough – Cleveland's got to control the ball. Um, but it's going to be different, obviously, than last week. I can guarantee you 110% put, put money on the – the Chiefs will not snap the ball over Patrick Mahomes' head on the first play of the game and go for a touchdown. Okay, guys? We'll put money on that. That's not going to happen. Um, okay? It's just, it's just not. If it, if it does happen, I want you to mail me money. Well, like, that's not going to happen. You want to mail you money? Uh, you haven't bet anything. So, so uh, yeah. If, and then, you know how a bet works, Rob? Someone offers one thing, another person offers another thing. It doesn't work if you just uh, say, yeah, mail me money. Also, um, it's not happening. If, but anyway, if you Mahomes ain't. Thousand to one odds and a cow, I'll take that bet. And a cow, he one. says. Oh, and a cow. Um, Mahomes ain't throwing uh, three interceptions. What did you say? Sorry. Mahomes ain't throwing three interceptions. Because, ben, like, okay. well, well, like Jeff just said about snapping over his head. Mo- uh, Roethlisberger threw two picks. Mahomes ain't going to throw three picks. I think Roethlisberger threw four picks. Yeah, he threw four picks. <laughs> yeah, even worse than <laughs> So I don't know who you're talking about, but <laughs> he was way That's worse funny. than that. <laughs> um, they have a little bit of a different offense, so I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but Cleveland, like I said, Cleveland has Wait, to control the ball. Can Rob's we... right there. They, they, they're going to have to go on long drives uh, to even have a chance at this game because if they keep giving the ball, their defense isn't good enough to hold up against Patrick Holmes. Can, and can we say this, though? Um, you, guys, you guys told me all season how good the Steelers' defense was. Can we give the Browns some props for, yeah, they snapped one over their head and he threw picks, but, like, they went down against what you guys told me was this great defense and put up, what, 50-something points? Like, they were a great away? defense they... until they started getting injuries. Yes. Okay. And here don't are the tell excuses. Me. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, everyone's injured. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you got an all pro linebacker getting injured and then his backup gets injured, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I'm not saying that's the reason. I, yeah, the Browns, I told you, the Browns look good. Um, It's obviously easier when you're working a uh, you know, full. Uh, when you're working on that that type of of uh, you know and half fields and you know whatever, I mean it, it's it's going to be a lot easier. Um, but I'm not I'm not discrediting the Browns on that. I never said it. I just you know the the Browns look good. I mean you can still have a good defense and still get shown up that you know that game. Um, I, I think the Browns have a major issue with trying to hold leads. Um, that's been doing it all year. Uh, it's, <laughs> they don't seem like they want to win a game, or it goes back to the thing where they think it's, uh, you know, for Drew's comment, same old Browns. They just they they don't know how to win it. I don't know. It's it's weird. You know, it's just or they don't want to win. I mean, why else would they let that back in? It's just it was weird down they the just, stretch. They I do just... they do what Brian Dable does. They get really effing conservative. They weren't though. They weren't. They started. They started the the drives most of them with play action, you know, hard play action passes. Um, they weren't getting conservative at all. They were just not performing. I don't know what you want to call it. It's. Well, I guess um, I shouldn't say the play calling. The play calling is not conservative. The players get real conservative and relaxed, and they don't finish. You're right. They don't finish. Well, that's what comes down to. Like I said, it's, it's because they don't. Calls, they haven't been there. But when before. they're incomplete passes, the clock's not running. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the problem. But it's uh, I don't know. It's 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 gonna be a good game. Um, I don't think the Chiefs defense is as good as the the Steelers. But my last point is that Andy Reid has notoriously been great coming off bye weeks during the regular season, and I'm gonna say this is essentially the same thing. I mean, you're coming off a bye week. Um, I give Reid the edge there. I mean, you got two weeks to prepare for people, and your guys are rested and. You know, it's just you – know, we'll see how rusty they come out. I don't think they'll come out rusty. I mean, Patrick, even if they do, I mean, they can score you know, quick no matter what. But um, – 
yeah, that's that's all I got to say. I don't know what you guys. <laughs> Everything else, Dad. Final game, Tampa Bay at New Orleans. Match three. I, exactly, match three, and that's the tough one. It's always lock the, tough. Of the Lock of the week, Buccaneers. Oh, my goodness. You know how hard it is to beat a team three Did goddamn times? No, I didn't because I was waiting. We're going to choose. Okay. All right. Oh, my God, guys. My dog just farted. I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm uh, going Saints. I am also going to Saints. As much as it pains me because it is hard to beat a team three times as we've talked about multiple times. But it's not just they just beat them. I mean they they beat them the first week or first time. They dominated the second time. Um is is uh, AB going to be that big of a change for him? I don't know. Um I just I like New Orleans defense. I like uh, what they're doing over there, and I mean, they were able to snag some games with Taysom Hill in there. Um, New Orleans has Mike Thomas back. Uh, you know Drew Brees. Like I said, he looked good last week. He had two thirty-five, two forty, something like that. Two TDs. Kamara almost ran for a hundred yards and had a, a TD or two. And I, I think that they're going to be able to expose them. Um, it's going to depend on if that defense can hold up with the speed. Uh, but I think Michael Thomas and Kamara have big games again. Uh, I just I want to see I want to see Drew Brees try to go up to to Lambeau and win. That's that's my prediction here. That's that's what I want to see. You know, so, but guys, it's been twelve years since a team beat a team three times. Is that for real? Is that season. real life? Yeah, the uh, Dallas Cowboys beat the Giants three times back in two thousand and eight. The two thousand eight season. Funny. That's funny. It's, uh, it's anyway. interesting to know. Um, doesn't change me in this game. <laughs> no, I, I I get it. I really do understand the the pick. I just I think this is a different Saints offense than what the Bucks have faced in any of those times. Because say what you want, I know you can tell me till I'm blue in the face that Drew Brees was fine against the Bears. I think that offense looks extremely static ever since Taysom Hill came into the game game and when Brees got hurt. And it's it's not performing. I get it. The Bucks defense isn't good either. But at the same time, I just I think that Bucks offense has it figured out now, and I think they're going to be able to put up points. And it, I think it's going to be a shootout. I really do. I don't know if I mean I just when's the last time the the Saints defense gave up points to anyone? You know, and that's that's my thing. It's just the Saints defense has been playing lights out this year. I mean, everyone's talking about how good the you know Bucks defense is. I mean, Saints defense needs some more, uh, just more kudos, dude. In my opinion, but let's see. <laughs> it's right. like, let's see. Let me look this up. They gave up thirty-two points to the Chiefs, thirty-three points to the Vikings. 24 to the Eagles. Okay, wait, 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 real quick, real quick, real quick. They How many points their the offense Vikings. put up against that Vikings team, though? What? How many how many points their offense put up against that Vikings team? You're you're yeah. gonna put up you're gonna give yeah. up points when you're hey, when you're constantly hey, scoring and scoring quick. How many points did Alvin Kamara put up against them? It doesn't matter. It's their offense. It's yeah. You can say it any way you want. It's true. No, you're right. And you, I don't, you can't compare I don't it think the, the, the I don't think Kamara is going to be able to run the ball that successfully, which is why I keep talking about Breeze. Because the one thing the Bucks defense think he is needs good at, to run the ball successful. I don't think he needs to run the ball at all. The defense, <laughs> yeah, I agree. You might not be wrong because those DBs are terrible in Tampa, but well, they, they are. But it's just I'm not. Even, they're really good against to, the run. You try to put a linebacker on on Alvin Kamara, you're screwed. Try putting a linebacker on him. I would, I would 100% leave Alvin Kamara split out wide the whole game and have Latavius Murray in the backfield. 100%. Just – that's my thing. But Alvin Kamara should catch 8 to 10 balls this game. 8 to 10. I just – I don't see how the Buccaneers' defense can stop the offense. That's my big – Big thing. Buccaneers have a good defense. I, I'm not going to say that. I mean, oh no, 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 no. Good. So like, I, like 
So, like, yes, they have a good defense. But like you just said, though, their corners are fucking trash. Okay. Sean Payton, we've talked about, is, you know, one of the best offensive minds. Sean Payton's going to go after those fucking corners. You don't think he's been watching the film and seeing Jamal Dean and just going, hmm, so he's my bitch. One big thing, though, that you're forgetting is their, their corners are really bad. It's not it's not on really deep stuff because the Buccaneers are super aggressive when it comes to blitzing. So if they get beat, it's usually something quick, and it's usually um, it's usually slot receivers that really kill them. I mean, I and that's why I would put, and that's what I'm saying. I would put Alvin Kamara in slot. He should be there, and he should stay there, and he should. <laughs> Um, no, that's. I think Alvin Al- Kamara is gonna be the X factor. Give him the rock, often, long and hard, baby. Let's go. Give it to him. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. That's the picks. We're all locked in. That's it. Um. Oh, and by the way, Thomas fucking Brady. That's my last response. <laughs> <laughs> um. Thomas Brady's nothing without Bill Belichick. Well, I mean, oh, I one of them's so. in the playoffs and one of them's not. Yeah, because one of them had freaking Cam Newton try to win games for him. So, so here's, oh. so here's, uh, so here's the, my final, the final thing, final question of the night. For this. What did Murphy eat? <laughs> after, <laughs> no, I, so after kind of, because I've been seeing a little bit of negativity from college football. Right? After this year's do is there going? Do you think there will be a serious consideration to move it to eight teams? There should be, but there won't. The payoff? Yes. Their next there should be things. just to make more money and have fun, but they won't because I mean, usually you have one of the final four games not even be competitive, if not both of them, and that's not what they want. That's that's not going to do any, any good for anyone. <laughs> just you know, if they if they do expand, it will not be to eight. It will be the it will be like sixteen or fourteen something like that. Okay. All right. There we go. What do you think? But, but I don't think they will. I th- because people still watch. The only thing that will change going in the next year is they're going to tweak the targeting rule. Yeah. As they should. As they yeah. should. They won't. I- they won't. Uh, they won't eject players. But watch the tweak's going to be that you're suspended for the next game or some shit. Yeah. It's still going to be bad. It won't be good. You can't, you can't not eject someone and then it's suspended for the next game. That's – no. Nope. It's college football, man. They can do whatever they want. All right. Thank you all for stopping by and watching. Depending on where you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Stay out of trouble, stay safe, and we'll, we'll talk to you all later. Smell you later. Bye. Thank you.